The table saw can be your best friend or your worst enemy. Now it's one of the most versatile tools in the shop and I use mine on every single project. But it's important to understand that this much power and the physics of what's happening here can be very dangerous if you don't take the proper precautions. Now one of the most common things that can happen on a table saw is kickback and that's when a workpiece makes contact with the back of the blade and basically rockets right back at you and if you're standing in the path and you're in that line of fire you're in trouble. So preventing kickback is incredibly important. Now, hopefully your saw came with a good quality splitter or riving knife, but if it didn't, you're gonna need to think about some sort of aftermarket solution. Uh, a lot of us buy our saws used, and sometimes those guards that come with the saws get thrown on the side and never seen again. So it's important that you have some sort of aftermarket splitter in place to prevent kickbacks from occurring. Now, one of the best ones out there on the market because it's very easy to install, very inexpensive, and instead of attaching to the metal of the saw, it actually attaches to your zero clearance insert. That is the Microjig MJ splitter system. It's been around for a while and I think it's worth checking out, especially if you've got that older saw with no protection in place, this is really gonna fit the bill. So let's check it out. Now what I have installed here is the Steel Pro version of the MJ splitter. It has a stainless steel body surrounded by this polycarbonate plastic layer on the outside. Very durable stuff. And the idea, as you can see, is it's right in alignment with the blade. Now, this is not that difficult to install because they give you everything you need to do it properly. It takes about five minutes and you'll have these holes located perfectly in your zero clearance insert. And really, that's the only other thing you need for this installation is a new zero clearance insert uh, that doesn't have any material in the back removed for a splitter because you need to drill into that space. All right, so obviously this is serving the purpose of keeping your workpiece separated as it goes through so that the, uh, if these do decide to bend in and pinch, they're not gonna make contact with the blade because the two splitters are blocking them from doing that. But there's a lot more nuance to what Microjig came up with here that I think you're really gonna enjoy. So let's take a closer look at some of that functionality. And when you first look at this setup, you might be wondering why we would want two splitters in a row. Well, this kind of has to do with blade thicknesses. Uh, different manufacturers have blade thicknesses that are slightly different, so they can't necessarily make these things uh, exactly the same thickness as the blade, because in some cases, it might be too thick, it might be too thin. Uh, when you look at a riving knife or a splitter from the manufacturer, typically these will be slightly undersized so that you can calibrate it and make it flush with the inside edge of the blade. Now, the problem with that is you still do have some kickback risk from your offcut piece. Granted, the most dangerous part is, is the part that's between the blade and the fence, so we have to cover that. But this piece can also be an issue too. So what they've done by putting two splitters, one behind the other, is they've allowed us to protect ourselves from both pieces because they're slightly offset. This guy, the first one, its job is to keep the keeper work piece, the piece that's between the blade and the fence, to keep that away from the blade. And the rear one is slightly offset this way to keep the off cut away from the blade, all right? So it's pretty slick and a heck of a lot safer, certainly safer than using nothing at all, but it could be argued that this, for a standard 90 degree cut, could very well be safer than using my riving knife. Now you're probably familiar with a traditional feather board. This one happens to be magnetic, so it's great for a cast iron surface like this, but the idea is for it to create a little bit of a spring pressure so it holds the workpiece against the fence. Now this is great, but you can only go so far with this because if you put it up too close to the blade, you're now pushing your workpiece into the teeth. That's never a good idea. So you need to have it in front of the blade. The other thing is at the end of the cut, wouldn't it be great if we had a little bit of pressure over here? I mean, there's times when I'm pushing a workpiece through that I am very tempted to bring my left hand around and push that piece against the fence, which is very dangerous to do. So, one very cool feature here is what they call their mini featherboard effect. With the standard setup, you'll see it has the letters MJ on the outside, and that basically means that that side is perfectly flush with the blade. Now, if you wanna create this mini featherboard effect, you can actually flip the piece over or use one of the other splitters that has the plus sign on it. So the plus sign means that this side has actually got more material here. In fact, it's three thousandths of an inch. So if I put that plus side facing the fence, I now know that this is going to be pushing outward a little bit by three thousandths. So when the workpiece comes through, 
as it clears the blade and starts to make contact with the splitter, it's going to actually just slightly push it into the fence, creating a mini featherboard effect. Now the cool thing is, depending on your setup and, and how much pressure you want, maybe the type of wood that you're working with and how much of a tendency it has to bow, you can use the different settings here. Right? This one has three plus signs, so that's going to be a total of nine thousandths. Right? And you could really fine tune it this way for the absolute safest and most secure cut. Now I've known about the MJ Splitter for quite some time, but one feature that I wasn't aware of and I was glad to find out about is what they call their Kerf Keeper. So instead of having your double splitter set up, you actually have a slightly different splitter in the back. And this one fits fairly loosely into the holes. In fact, it's a slightly different installation. Uh, so when you install this, you would probably want a second zero clearance insert for this setup. All right, so the Kerf Keeper is a solid plastic piece that sits in the back fairly loosely so that if a workpiece comes through and think in terms of like a long piece of solid wood that just naturally seems to want to bow in on itself if it pinches this with enough pressure it will lift it out and you'll see it move so now we have a visible warning sign telling us trouble this means trouble and you may want to stop the saw and rethink this particular cut because your pieces are bowing in severely the second thing is if these pieces are coming together they now have a piece of plastic here that will stop that kerf from closing up, right? And as that kerf closes up, that's actually what's creating our kickback risk, all right? So the Kerf Keeper is a really nice safety addition, especially if you're doing those really long solid wood rips. Now, perhaps one of the coolest features of the NJ Splitter is the price. You're not spending hundreds of bucks to get something like this installed on your saw. It's $35. So all you really need is that zero clearance insert, the $35 kit for the steel pro system, and you've got yourself a significantly safer saw with lots of cool little features to go with it. So definitely worth checking out. Now, Microjig wants you to know that if you sign up for their newsletter, go over to their website, you can actually get a free plan. It's a PDF download for an interchangeable zero clearance insert where you could pop in um, replacement pieces which is great because sometimes you know you do like a 45 degree bevel well you don't want to use your 90 degree kerf cut for that you want to have a different one so it's nice to have multiple zero clearance inserts and especially if you get into the micro jig setup here you're going to want one set up for the kerf keeper and one set up with the standard double splitter so you have the best of both worlds that way but you need a couple of zero clearance inserts to do it so head on over to their site sign up for the newsletter and that plan is yours so as always stay safe in the workshops know your tools uh, read the instruction manuals, wear glasses, all that crap. Thanks for watching.